Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. If you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you know that I love my animal-influenced guitars. We got things like the Rhino Les Paul, the Centipede Custom, the Black Widow. We got some crazy snakeskin like Firebirds. There's just a lot of cool nature-influenced guitars out there. And here is the Grand Mac Daddy. Take a look at that beauty. We've got an octopus guy, we've got some dolphins. I mean, how much more could you ask for on this guitar? So this was a Les Paul handcrafted custom shop artisan by Rick Heinrichsen. You know, we interviewed him for the Tarantula guitar, or the Woodlouse Spider, I forget what he called it. It was the L5, check it out in this episode. But this one is titled Ho'olana, but it's Hawaiian for Wait for the Wave. So let's go ahead and dive in here. So normally, a Les Paul Customs headstock would look like this. You got your big, beautiful mother of pearl custom emblem on here. But this one, they've replaced that with this octopus guy on here that we were looking at earlier. And it's done up in true mother of pearl. He's got a really evil, sinister look to him with those black eyes, though. It just looks fantastic. It still has all the other great binding going on on the headstock, the straight up golden tuners. I really love the way this Gibson logo looks. It's stylized a little bit differently, at least from this photo angle. And then you get the Les Paul custom truss rod cover and those inlays on the fretboard that we were talking about. The fretboard appears to be all ebony and they just has a whole bunch of dolphins playing around. I love dolphins, so having dolphins on the fretboard is pretty cool. I kind of wish they would have just went for one giant one on the fretboard though. That way they could have really went crazy you know slash snake pit vibes go super crazy on a nice ornate dolphin that's like smiling at you and then you get the octopus or maybe they could have just did the octopus head and then had tentacles on here but i don't know that's kind of <laughs> going from wait for the wave to super marine aquatic life which would definitely speak to other people but hey check out that 12th fret inlay it's like the dolphins are playing with a ball seeing this got me so excited but wait till you see the rest of the guitar oh Oh no. <laughs> uh, it's a fruity guitar. I, I hate to say it. I appreciate Rick and I love his work, but this one, it, it doesn't do anything for me. It's a bit too fruity of a Les Paul. I actually first found this guitar through a Facebook group where somebody posted just the headstock. I had to message him and say, where is the rest of this guitar? <laughs> and then when he said, oh, it's on Gibson's Instagram page and I saw the rest, I was a little bit let down. But everything they did on the headstock, I want to custom order something exactly like this with all the same inlays, but make it like an ocean blue quilt top, a little bit more traditional, and then that is a winner. Like this whole thing is just awesome. But don't click off of this video yet. You might not be seeing some of these other cool attributes of this thing. So obviously, I mean, being called Ho'olana, wait for the wave, you're going to have a giant wave on here. So that works. That's pretty cool. You've got a beach on here. You've got a really colorful sun going on, golden hardware, clear see-through knobs. I love the way that the double bobbin pickups and the white pickup rings work with the whole blue theme down here. But did you see this? I'm ashamed. I've had this thing saved in a watch list for so long to make a video on it, and I never noticed it has a surfboard pick guard. How awesome is that? I love it. It just hides with all this other stuff. I never noticed it because it's got the same flowers as the other side of the guitar. But hey, check this out. That's not just any type of pick guard. That's the same wood construction of my favorite five piece maple necks that Gibson makes. So you got maple here, maple there and here, but then you get your center stripes of walnut. Ah, that's just beautiful. It makes a perfect board. I mean, sure, it doesn't do much for protecting the guitar right here, but it, it does a pretty good job of protecting the rest of it. But that means in person, that flame figuring should move. So that's a flamed pick guard. How cool is that? And of course, we got some more dolphins going on on the fretboard here. But the fun's not over yet. Only the top is fruity. But wait until you see the sides in the back. So backside of the headstock. Unfortunately, we, we don't have the multi-piece neck on this, which I think would have been cool, you know, to play off that pick guard. But we do have the title of this guitar painted on the back, and it's number one. Apparently, they made two of these. According to the description here, they all had some slight paint differences to them, though that were based off of the original Ho Mama. <laughs> These, that's how I wish it that was pronounced, but it's probably Ho Omaha. <laughs> 
That was created for the Winter Nam 2019. We'll take a look at that once we finish this up. But we've got the regular Custom Shop Edition decal back here. But then, hey, check this out. Kind of like sometimes the art guitars, they get really fancy heels, like check out some of Bruce Kunkel's work. This one has a starfish. I can't say it's my favorite thing that Rick has ever carved into a guitar. I feel like we need a little bit more detail on it, like a whole bunch of spikes, because aren't starfish kind of spiny? Or maybe what would have made this pop better is if it would have been painted before it was clear coated over. But that is something else that makes this guitar pretty interesting. I don't see any actual photos of just the back, so I think it's just plain natural. But what an interesting Les Paul. Like, even if you don't care about this, I'm sure you can at least love the face of the headstock. But now let's check out Oh Mama, which is this one. It's got some other waves going on. It's got the same flowers. But this one, it had a starfish inlay. And I don't know, maybe it's just the lighting making this one look a little bit more yellowed. Like, if somebody told me that was a chipson, I would almost believe them. <laughs> But I guess that's probably where the starfish came from on the backside of the other one. They're paying tribute to this original one. But I gotta say, that octopus is way cooler. And then it looks like this one actually has footprints as the inlays that are kind of yellowed over. That kind of makes sense if you think about it because you're walking on a beach. I mean, there's dolphins there, but generally I would think footsteps on the beach rather than dolphins at the beach. And the pickguard on this one, while also being cool and being a surfboard, they painted it. So I think this one did everything even better. Like it's got the same general vibe to it, but with some other cool attributes. So I hope you enjoyed checking that thing out. There is another Les Paul out there that is squid slash octopus related, but I don't want to talk about the Kraken today. We'll save that for another episode. But perhaps you want something a little bit more traditional, but untraditional at the same time. I've got three other guitars I'd like to share with you tonight. So here is a brand new Gibson Custom 1954 Les Paul reissue in a VOS Antique Natural offered by Detroit Guitars. I was tempted, but I just decided not to at the end of the day. So it's based on a 54 gold top. Generally, this is have a gold finish, but they just decided to have it finished in an antique natural. Now, they call this a plain top, but it doesn't look hyper plain. Like, this is one of those tops that'll kind of play in the light, depending on which way you're viewing it. It's got some nice figuring to it. But we'll maybe almost consider buying this one for documentation is, look at that. On the back side of the headstock, we have a factory stinger. So even though it's kind of a, a plain boring back as far as all that goes, just being a natural mahogany, you have the it factor back here with the factory stinger on top of the unusual antique natural finish for this particular guitar. I think that's a nice pickup if you're in the market for a brand new 54 style guitar. But let's say you wanted something a little bit more exotic. This one's already sold, but another crazy one from the Music Zoo. So this is a triple P90 gold top. So this time the finish is the same. They just added another P90 pickup in here. Still left at the wrap tail and all. So that's a little bit different from say the queen of clean because A, that's a custom, whereas this is more of a standard. But having that whole wrap tail with that, that would be interesting. But other than that, they left this a natural back. No stinger on this one, but we do have a traditional style serial number. 41261 with the VOS finish job on those tuners and the rest of the guitar and the Lifton style reissue case. That one was for sale at 4699 But let's say you want something somewhere in between. Rainbow Guitars actually custom ordered a couple of these 54s in different finishes too. These ones are flame tops, so they're a little bit more expensive than that plain top one we were looking at. But I thought these looked really nice for the money. Like if you like the wrap tails, that has a very cool vintage look to it. But if you like your more burst colors, here's a really nice dark one. I wouldn't say that's my favorite in the world though. Definitely preferred that first one. But if you like more of like a honey burst or something, you've also got this. Now that looks like quite a nice top. <laughs> you don't see wrap tails this beautiful that often, but I would definitely choose that first one. But they're all available at 5,000 if you're interested. And I guess while we're talking about three pickup guitars, if you're on a budget, check this thing out. It's been on the market for four months, which I am surprised. But then again, it did start life as an SG Faded, which was a pretty cheap guitar. I think they generally sell on the used market between six and nine hundred bucks today. I think if you're in Sweden, you can get that shipping cost down a lot because, I mean, spending fourteen hundred bucks for a modified SG Faded might seem like a bit much. But I saved this because it really reminded me of the Captain Kirk Douglas SG. So if you want one of those, but on a budget, half as much, even if you had to pay all the money to get it shipped back to the U.S., they just 
pretty much did that in a cheaper format and they made it a hot pink color. Now, I guess looking at it closely, this was not a professional refinish by any means. But hey, as long as the wiring was done up well, I guess it doesn't really matter. It looks like they capped off the original studs for the stop bar tailpiece with a white placard that kind of looks similar to the pickguard material. That way you don't see those, so you might be able to convert that back if you didn't want the trim system. You might lose the custom style inlays and the fancier looking headstock that the Captain Kirk Douglas has. But man, I just kind of want to see a bright pink signature limited edition Kirk Douglas SG like this now. Because it does have a cool vibe to it. Paint flaws and all. But then again, looking at it at this angle, it's almost like it's just a swirled paint job instead of like a botched paint job. You can still see some of the wood grain at the same time. That's interesting. But looking over here, it looks like we got master volume, master tone with a mini toggle. So you might actually be able to split these pickups, whatever they put in here. We've got a 490T in the bridge position, Epiphone Classic 57 in the middle, okay, sometimes Epiphone pickups can sound pretty good, and then a Seymour Duncan in the neck, and ah oh man, the mini toggle is just to put the middle pickup within the circuit. That's no fun. <laughs> All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out these pretty interesting guitars with me tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.